Hi girls, we're on to question four. Now if I was you, question four actually doesn't have anything new in it that we haven't done in the previous three questions. So if I was you, I would try question four on your own and then I'd watch these solutions and see how it went. Okay, so now that you've done it on your own, <laughs> let's try. So the question says the graphs of f of x, which is the parabola, equals, and it's interesting the way in which they've given it to you. Why have they given it to you like that? Well, they've given it to you in factorized format. So if it's in factorized format, it means that finding your x-intercepts are really easy. Because I can see from this that x would be 0, or x would be equal to minus 3 would be your two intercepts. And that looks very plausible because that seems to be going to the origin, and I think that's minus 3. So if they do ask us to find these intercepts, most importantly, it wouldn't make sense to multiply out. Because it's almost like they've given me the x-intercept format. Then they've given me a straight line, which is a minus a half x plus 2. And so if needed, I know my y-intercept is 2. And lo and behold, the first question is determine the values of x for which f of x is 0, which is my, which are my x-intercepts of my parabola. So 0 equals x, x plus 3. And you'll see that it's only for 2 marks. Because if you just wrote straight down those coordinates, I would give you 2 marks. Please don't make the mistake of multiplying out. You can, but then you have to factorize again, and it's a waste of time. So I get x is 0, or x is minus 3, as said. Now, just be careful to answer the question. It says determine the values of x. And so I don't have to write them as coordinates, because they ask for values of x, which means I'm finished. Always try and use your mark allocation as a guide. Two marks, if you had to multiply out and then factorize and find two values, that seems like a bit too much work. OK, next question says, now that I know that this is at minus 3 and this is at 0, calculate the coordinates of E, the turning point. Now, we've spoken about this multiple times now. Um, there's lots of ways. Completing the square, never an option. Or negative B over 2A. But I don't have the multiplied out version yet, so then I'd have to multiply out and figure out B and A. Or add your two x intercepts together and divide by 2. So much easier here. So I actually get negative 3 over 2, which is negative 1 and a half. Now just be careful, the question said the coordinate. So yes, I know that it's negative 3 over 2 for x, but what is y? So not a problem, because I have the equation. So what is f of negative 3 over 2? Well, it's equal to negative 3 over 2 times by negative 3 over 2 plus 3. I'm pretty sure that was the equation. So I would just use my, my calculator for that, but it basically becomes negative 9 over 4. As far as I can do in my head, so this is negative 9 over 4, which looks possible. You know, that's a negative value, so that looks, you know, plausible. Okay, so that was the turning point. Three marks, because you had to find the turning point. You had to substitute in and then find y. Okay, moving on to the next question. We've seen one of these before. Determine the average gradient between x is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to negative 3. I'm assuming they mean of f or on f, because obviously there wouldn't be an average gradient on g, because that would have a consistent, constant gradient because it's a straight line. So a bit of a badly worded question. Um, so this is negative 3. I don't know where negative 5 is. Let me pretend it's there. Negative 5, I don't know what. But basically they're saying to me, assume that's a straight line, which it almost does look like one because it's zoomed out so far, um, and find the gradient of the straight line. Not a problem because the equation of a straight line gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I do know the point A is negative 3, 0, so I don't have to do any work there. I don't know what negative 5's y value is. But again, not a problem, because what is f of negative 5 would be negative 5, and then negative 5 plus 3, which would be negative 5 times negative 2, which would be 10. Now, I would worry if I didn't get a positive, because clearly it's a positive number. So finally, my gradient is 10, take away 0, change in y, over negative 5 minus minus 3, which is actually negative 5 plus 3. So I wouldn't probably show any of this working because, I mean, this, this, this line here, because you can just use your calculator. But basically, you get 10 over negative 2, which is negative 5. Now, would it make sense for the gradient to be negative? Well, yep, because the parabola is going down. And it's fairly steep, and the parabola looks fairly steep. 
So that makes sense. Again, that's another fairly easy question for us now. Right, determine the values of x for which f of x is greater than 0. Well, this was at negative 3, and this was at 0. And they're asking, where is the parabola greater than 0? So that's when it's equal to 0. Now, that part of the parabola is greater than 0, or that part is greater than 0. So my answers are going to be, it's from negative 3 downwards, or from 0 upwards. So either x must be less than negative 3 or x is greater than 0. Don't forget why I'm using 0. These are two completely separate intervals. So either x is below negative 3 or it's above 0. You can't be in both of those places at the same time. Don't forget that this is a two mark question. So definitely don't solve an inequality algebraically in a functions question. Always use your graph. Don't forget that note we made in the previous questions. Right, on to the next one. Give the coordinates of the turning point of f of x minus 1 plus 3. Now, we haven't seen one of these before, I don't think. What does this mean? What does it mean when you take f of x, and instead of having f of x, you minus 1 from x? Now, hopefully we all know that that is a translation. One unit, and if you're minusing 1, it's one unit right. And if I'm adding 3, it's 3 units up. So this question says give the coordinates of the turning point. Well, that's not going to be too bad because I know the coordinates of E. If I remember correctly, it was negative 3 over 2, negative 9 over 4. And all I need to go do is translate 1 unit right. So that'll be 1 unit right would be negative a half. And 3 units up, if I add 3 units up, if I do some quick mental maths, I think I get 3 quarters, I think. I must just check that quickly. Yeah, I think I'm right, because I did negative 9 over 4, and I added 3, and again, I would do it on my calculator. And, and so there's my answer. They didn't actually ask me for the transformation in words, although I did that as well, which is quite useful, but they asked me to find the coordinates of the turning point. So finding the translation was a stepping stone. Now again, it's two marks. So I wouldn't actually bother going to find the formula for that new graph and then find its turning point. It's easier for two mark question, it's easier to figure out what you did and then just do that to the turning point. Okay, our last question is a practice one again of one of these more difficult vertical distance questions. So this question said C is a point on the straight line, D is a point on F, such that CD is perpendicular to the x-axis. One of those typical, we've seen this before, determine the maximum length of CD. Well, first of all, we need to know that this is a vertical distance, and every vertical distance is top Y minus bottom Y. You'll notice we always come back to that. Now, what is the top Y? I don't know the top y value because I don't know where c is, but I do have a formula for that. It's negative a half x plus 2. And I'm subtracting the bottom y, which is the parabola, which is x, x plus 3. So if I neaten that up a bit, this is negative a half x plus 2 minus x squared plus 3 x, which is going to be negative a half x plus 2 minus x squared minus 3x. And now if I write that as kind of a parabola, so I put my x squareds first. Now, I can't multiply by 2 because this isn't an equation. So I just have to go minus a half minus 3. So that's minus 3 and a half, which is minus 7 over 2 if I use my calculator plus 2. Now that's an expression for the length of CD. So if you knew x, you could just sub an x and find CD. If you knew what CD's length was, you could now put in CD and work backwards to x. That's what we did in one of the questions. Otherwise, in this case, they asked for the maximum length of CD. So we're trying to maximize a parabola. Now it is a sad parabola, and CD is a sad parabola and it'll have a turning point and that'll be the maximum. So I need my x value of my turning point which is negative b all over 2a. 
So where did I get that negative b from? There's b, so it's negative negative 7 over 2, and there's a. So I land up getting negative 7 over 4, as far as I can gather. That'll be negative 7 over 4. So at negative 7 over 4, my length will be maximized. Now, did they ask for the x value that maximizes it? Nope. They asked for the maximum length of CD. So I've got to go and take this negative 7 over 4 and put it back into my expression for CD. So CD is going to equal to negative negative 7 over 4 squared minus 7 over 2 times negative 7 over 4 plus 2. Now you notice that once again this, these aren't very nice numbers and so never be alarmed when these numbers aren't perfectly wonderful. Just pick up your calculator and work it out. So I worked it out. I got 81 over 16. Now I'll know if I'm incorrect because you can't get, ever get a negative distance. So if I got a negative distance then I know I made a mistake. Right, now that's the end of question four. So hopefully you try that on your own and you're slowly going, okay, I'm getting the hang of this. I've seen these questions before. Remember, the more you practice in functions, the better you get at these types of questions. Okay, well done.